Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play the Stanley Parable. Blind! I don't know anything about this game. All I know is that people all over the place are raving about it. Um, I've seen nothing but positive reviews. Uh, the vague reviews, they don't really say exactly what this game is, except it's kind of a mind bender. I guess. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, all I've done is adjust some settings. Um, few options here, made the graphics prettier, made uh, my key bindings the way I want them to be, and uh, let's do this. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Well, this isn't good. I mean, we need orders or else we don't know what buttons to push. Let's figure this out. Okay, left-clicking doesn't do anything. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? Fair point. He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Sorry for uh, some of the jump cuts. Uh, my recording software does not like their loading screen, so I'm going to have to splice some of that together. But enough of that. You're not here to hear about my jump cuts. You are here to uh, enjoy the Stanley Parable. Okay, does this... What is my... Okay, I can open and close doors, interact with stuff with left-click, right-click. All right -click. Of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Okay, now these doors want to open. Can't pick that up. It's kind of creepy. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Nice hint. That's pretty great. <laughs> Alright, well, let's do this. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. 
Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <laughs> Absolutely, I am a contrarian rebel. Boy, they're getting a lot of mileage out of um, <laughs> out of those assets, chairs, desks, whatever. Christ. Uh, ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been <laughs> worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. It's true. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Ah, the American dream. They got coffee, though. Well, coffee cups there. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Hey. Really worth it. Hey. Hey. Back off. There's coffee here. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> what else you got for me? What else you got in there? sat around waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> I will not be beaten. You hear me? I will not be beaten. Can I jump? I can't jump. Alright, you had enough narrator? I win. I'm declaring victory. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room, and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Or he went straight ahead. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> oh my, I am enjoying this. Uh, where are we going? Forklift. Penalties. Five grand for jumping off the cargo lift? Do I need to save? I do not. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <sighs> well... Okay, I guess we're back here. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? All right, so we Did don't want to crucial happen die. While my senses were turned. He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. I want to see if there's anything else when I can. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his no, left. No, 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 he didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. He did not. He went straight through, took a left, and went out to the loading dock. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Can I put this thing in motion? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Her? I make my own rules. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside, 
to let her back into your life. <sighs> She's been waiting. <sighs> Who's this her? Damn it. I won't write my own rules. Uh, okay, I guess I'm going this way. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. All right. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha! Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? They'd want to commit their life to you. Dude! I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Dude, this is messed up. I love it. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Uh... Okay. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Okay. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now... He's eating lunch. Now, he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I'm not gonna press C. Screw off. No way. Not happening. Hey, you hear me? I'm not pressing C. You're going to make me wait it out, aren't you? Seriously? Seriously. God damn it. All right, all right, fine. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work, was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Now you're depressing me. Stop it. Stop depressing me. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So am I like pulling an American Psycho here, or what? Alright, let's spend time with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors, and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Okay, I'll press two. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Uh, let me out. I want out. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. 
the more he forgets which life is the real one. I'm sad now. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? All right, let's let's question stuff. How long are we gonna be sitting here? All right, I'm gonna wait thirty seconds, and then I'm gonna push five to question nothing. Riveting TV. Riveting LPs. The Stanley Parable. And it uh, looks like we're pushing up on 15-20 uh, minutes. Uh, so I'm going to cut the video here and we'll be back in a moment.